If you think about the body politic today and the elite, the elite, the pagan elite, I like to call them, they have created a scenario in which they demand that Christians leave their ethics at the door, that they leave their morals at the door, that they leave the laws of God at the door when they come into the room to discuss politics and laws and public policy. In the 1970s and 1980s, there was a phrase that was bantered about constantly called secular humanism. And then it became secularism. Well, in effect, what it meant was that we don't want God, what the secular humanist wanted was a culture and a body politic that was free of the influence of Judaic law, the Ten Commandments, and Christian law, the Ten Commandments with slight alterations, and, and then the Christian faith as taught by our Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles in the early church. We want a culture that is free of the constraints and the demands of that religion or of those two religions. Are you still with me? So you've got people like Obama today who, or John Kerry, who says he's a Catholic, but they want a, a nation judges, legislators, legislatures, laws, they want a nation that is not only free to throw out the laws of God, but insists that Christians not impose their morality on others in the law. So that means what? We want child killing, the murder of babies by abortion, to be illegal, a criminal act. You cannot kill a baby. Babies are protected by law like all of us, okay? And they say, no, that's a Christian belief. You've got to not do that. You can't, you can't have that be law, and you can't have it be the foundation for, your, for law. Then you have marriage, the issue of marriage. We say marriage is between one man and one woman at a time. That's what it is, okay? They say, no, it can be between people of the same gender. We reject the Jewish Christian traditions and Jewish and Christian laws that demand that it be between one man and one woman. We reject that. And we say to you, you may not impose your religious beliefs on us. Now, this is a, a critical element because they've painted themselves into their godless corner. What they want is a godless body politic, okay? They don't want us saying, well, private property is in the Bible, and so therefore we can have it. Um, sex outside of marriage is wrong, and, and this Planned Parenthood is a criminal uh, conspiracy against families, against babies, helps pedophiles. They said, no, 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 we don't want to hear about your religion. We don't want to hear about your beliefs. This is what the laws is, what we believe is the best. This is what freedom looks like to us, okay? So they painted themselves into their godless corner. And then along come Muslims who say, we have a religion and our religion doesn't have a baptism. It has a profession. Okay, you become a Muslim when you profess these words. And I don't believe them. They are not true, but I'll tell you what the profession is. There is no God but God, or there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet, or Muhammad is his messenger. If you say those words and believe them, and you say them in the presence of other Muslim witnesses, you're a Muslim. That's it. Now, if it was just that, okay, if it was just that, then that's nah, not that big a deal, right? Like if you want to be baptized and be a Christian, that's nah, not that big a deal, go ahead. But the problem is, is that Islam like Christianity, like Judaism. Islam has political fruit. It has political demands. And it is those political fruits and political demands in the Islamic schema that are the threat to Christianity and what we used to call Christian civilization. I'm going to take a quick break and continue with this. Stay with me, please.
Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the Republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today.